As you know, Victorian authorities are working hard to get on top of this Holiday Inn outbreak. 11 cases now, all associated with hotel quarantine. No real community transmission yet, thankfully. Let's hope it stays that way. But already this has delayed plans to have more workers return to the Melbourne CBD. It's made face masks mandatory again indoors. And for crying out loud, they've already cancelled the Anzac Day march in Melbourne. It's more than two months away and they've scrapped it. What a shame. What a shambles. Anyway, businesses, especially small businesses, are suffering again. And I'll have more on that in just a minute. We'll catch up with a small business owner. But borders have slammed shut again too. Unbelievably, Queensland has now reintroduced a permit system for Victorian travellers. And as I told you last night, South Australia incredibly slammed its border shut to Melburnians as of midnight last night. Now, South Australia announced that move late yesterday afternoon and this understandably sparked a rush for the border with South Australians looking to get home or Victorians looking to get across while they still could. As you know, I've railed against this sort of stuff for months. It's unfair, it's knee-jerk, it's illogical, panicky and it causes enormous trauma for people, for communities, for companies, for families. And last night it also caused a bank-up of traffic on the main highway at the South Australian border checkpoint. Locals tell me there were warning signs a kilometre ahead of the checkpoint, but the, the traffic backed up for about six kilometres. Tragically, in the early hours of the morning, a truck driver slammed into this lineup of vehicles, mainly other trucks, who are... Uh, they're allowed to cross the border anyway, these semi-trailers. It was a shocking crash. Three trucks caught fire, two drivers were hospitalised, and the first truck driver was killed. A man's life lost. This is just terrible. Now, no one's blaming the police on either side of the border. No one knows yet about other factors and, of course, the need for all drivers any time to be aware of possible obstructions. But this tragedy is certainly a fatality linked to those border closure measures and the way they're implemented. The South Australian Police sent safety officers to the site today and they've launched an inquiry. This was a queue in the middle of nowhere, effectively, to cross a border that we would normally just cross without batting an eyelid as we cruise past at 110 kilometres per hour. And one man slammed into that queue and he's now dead. I'm joined now by Paul Freestone from Freestone's Transport. He joins me from Tullamarine in Melbourne. Paul, uh, I want to start off with how your company was affected. I'm certainly you'd want to start off by, you know, sharing sympathies with the people affected here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, our condolences to all the family and, and the, the first responders, which were the drivers on the scene who helped uh, some of the other drivers that were caught up between the uh, the trucks that were pushed forward. And unfortunately, I actually think that um, I think there's two might be dead now. Um, Kenny, it's it's just we've, it's a ludicrous situation. We had what we're told, we had five policemen at the border. Because it was quiet, two went home, we believe. There was no due diligence done. The traffic backed up for seven to 10 kilometres. There was about 150 cars in amongst that, obviously travellers trying to get home. Similar to the situation where uh, Victoria closed its border to New South Wales and there were people you know, doing, trying to do 20 hour drives to get home. Um, the the accident you've got to remember this too the eastbound lanes open so those trucks coming past that line up of trucks probably knows to tail a lot of bright lights and i sort of what i'm told was on a bit of a bend obviously um these trucks with abs now you won't leave skid marks on the road because you know that's what they're designed to do to try to stop quick uh we i think at the end of the day as you rightfully said we can't blame the police, they're just out there doing as they're told. But what we can blame is the system. It was never a proper shutdown. It was done too early. The trucks should never have been stopped anyhow. If they had the blockade at Border Town itself, you could have had the trucks use the Border Town bypass, had the cars go through Border Town and control that. And I'm sure at the end of the day, and what I'm told, there's never been a COVID test positive for a long distance driver 
Well, this is the important point. Correct. This is yeah. important point, Paul. Of course, the trucks are allowed to go through anyway because it's uh, right. you've got to keep that trade going. So uh, that, that's very, very important. Uh, secondly, you could do this checkpoint in the towns where the trucks have slowed down to 60 kilometres an hour and there are more lanes and areas off the side of the road to pull over. But to have uh, in the middle of a, a place where you've got a high speed limit, there's suddenly, as you say, six, seven, maybe ten kilometres of traffic banked up at short mm. notice, to me is a situation you would do everything to avoid. Well, we had the same amount of time to prepare for this. We put our COVID safe plan in place. We had our drivers that were going west tested. So they had a, a documentation that had been tested. What happened to the South Australian police? Where's their system? What happened to the Victorian police? It, the accident happened on their side. It, to me, it, it's it's just total incompetence. And when you get back to it, and look, I, I'm sure all these good people with good intentions, but personally for me, we've got us we've got to become a nation again. We've got to be as one. We can't have health ministers making decisions, first of all, they're going to cost lives. They've got no idea of logistics. They've got no idea of the, the volumes of traffic on the road. And obviously, the police never had the resources to set up a proper closure. Do you know, and, do you, do you know Paul, even where the Victorian police were there? Because certainly some locals no. from the South Australian side have suggested to me that the checkpoint was put in place in the, on the South Australian side of the border, the traffic backed up into Victoria, and there was no coordination with Victorian police to control the traffic on their end. Well, that would be one for the Vic Pole and the South Australian police. But what I'm told from... Uh, I had my future son-in-law in the queue and he had some of his trucks back behind a bit, which apparently helped um, one of the drivers who was crushed up against the windscreen and the dashboard of the trucks that got jammed together. Um, and yeah, there was nothing. And as you say, in the driver that was going west that crashed into the back of the liner, you've got to remember, I, I believe it's on a bend and he's got the same, he's got all this traffic coming eastbound he could have been blinded by the lights or he's just confused. He might not have had any of his radios on. He might have been listening to a, a book or something, as, as a lot of drivers do. And as I say, he come up on that quick and physically couldn't stop. And I think, you know, as I say, I just feel for the family so much uh, and all the guys that were there because it's a war zone. You, know, you, you imagine being there yourself, Kenny, and, and seeing what they're seeing and trying to pull people out of burning wrecks and all the rest of it. It shouldn't have happened. Um, it should have been totally avoided. This has happened through a knee-jerk reaction. And, and let, let me say this to everyone listening. Do you reckon there was any line hall drivers at the Holiday Inn or at Sunbury Shopping Centre or at the Sunshine Shopping Centre? No. The truck should never have been stopped in the first place. You know, we've been doing this through the whole COVID. Our company and every, I all the contacts I have through the Victorian Transport Association, we haven't had one line or driver test positive. So we've done a fairly good job. Yet someone makes a decision to back the trucks up. We had the same problem on the Victorian New South Wales border. When that first started, at least that was organised. They've slowed the trucks up before they got to the crossing. But we, we negotiated with the police and the people controlling to have a, a line for trucks so they could pass through because they're no threat to anyone. Paul, yeah, when they're when they're in town, they're asleep. For God's sake. Yeah, Paul, you make so much sense. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Paul Freestone. There, who runs Freestone uh, Transport. I mean, put it this way: there's a simple question on this, a very simple question that politicians and other people in authority ought to ask themselves: What is more dangerous? A truck driver driving across the border from Victoria into South Australia when there's 10 hotel quarantine cases around a hotel in Melbourne or suddenly throwing up a checkpoint and having seven kilometres of traffic backed up in the dark in a part of the country where people are normally driving around at 110 kilometres an hour. It's pretty obvious and we've got to be a lot more sensible with this stuff. A man has lost his life. We'll try and check that information from Paul suggesting there could be a second fatality out of that crash, but certainly two other drivers were in hospital.